Welcome to Public Domain Video Theater presented by the great detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Today we're going to bring you another episode of Dangerous Assignment. This is Season 1, Episode 3, Original Air Date, Fall of 1951. How's your headache? Headache? I haven't got any headache. Oh, yes, you have, as of right now. Here's your headache. Looks like a old warehouse on a dock. That's in Casablanca. It's a displaced persons camp. You mean people live there? 700 of them. About a year ago, they managed to get out of Eastern Europe. They've been living there ever since? Yes. Steve, there's a tiny island under international mandate in the eastern Mediterranean, Galada. I get it. Turn the island over to them and let them build a new country of their own, huh? Yes, we're going to furnish them with a merchant ship to get them there, but somebody's been uh, raising trouble in the camp. Somebody doesn't want them to have a new home? Yeah. Steve, we've got to see that these people reach that island. Get over there and don't let anything happen to them until they're safely aboard that ship. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Sure, I've got my assignment. Fly over to Casablanca, put my finger on one guy out of 700, the one who's trying to gum up the works, then play bodyguard to the other 699 until they get safely aboard ship. A real breeze. It's late Wednesday afternoon when my plane lands at Casablanca and I head to the dock at the waterfront. Hi, Mr. Steve Mitchell. That's right. Welcome to our camp. We have been expecting you. I am John Sieta. You in charge here, John? No, my father, Joseph Sieta, is our leader. I help him run the camp. I see. Come, I will show you our home. where we run the camp. And this, this goes all the way down to the dock. It really works. Miklos is supposed to be around here. Miklos! Miklos! You want me? Your place is in the office. It will not happen again. If it does, I shall speak to my father. This is my home. Come, I will show you more. Not very friendly. Unfortunately, we are a divided people. This is Shari's room. Shari. Shari. 
Shari, this is Mr. Mitchell of the United States. Glad to meet you, Shari. Shari and I hope to marry one day, but she does not believe our dreams of a new home will come true. I don't wish to discuss it. It would be better if we were left alone. We will discuss this later. Come. He is better today. Come. Gorek! Oh, I wanted to have everything fixed. It does not matter. Gorek? This is Mr. Mitchell. Gorek? I'm most happy. Gorek is a construction engineer, now our handyman. Construction engineer? Yes, we've managed to do some road building for the government here in return for food. I see. Well, how do you like it? Like it? Uh, the room? Yes, we fixed it for you while you're with us. That was very nice of you. Make yourself comfortable. If you want to wash. Soap. How long have you been living here? Well, ten months. And before this? Before this, we had nothing. But think of what we will have on, on our island, our new home. And somebody's trying to block that. Yes. It's a bad thing to do to us. You know why they're trying to do it to you, don't you? Where you came from, there isn't any freedom anymore. That is why we left. They don't want you to find freedom. Or a new life. Because what you can do, others can do. Yes, I know. That is why there's trouble. Whisperings, ugly rumors that we will never reach our island. Be cheated of our home. The dissension is growing. Any idea who's in back of it? John, I would like to speak to you. Of course. Excuse me, Mr. Mitchell. John, like his father, believes the way most of us do. But our destiny lies in the island in the Mediterranean. Our home to be. Zary doesn't believe that? She's skeptical. She suspects some trick. Do you happen to know whether she's been trying to convince the other people of the same thing? But a beautiful woman can be most persuasive. Wait. Hmm. Miklos. I do not trust him. Oh, he's, he's whispering to people. Any idea what he's whispering about? No. Well, I'll go along now. Maybe we can talk later. Excuse me. Mr. Mitchell. I am sorry to be such a rude host, but Shari is upset about something she wishes to talk. Well, go right ahead. Don't worry about me. If, if you will wait here, my father will meet you. Fine. Mr. Mitchell.
happened, Mr. Mitchell? <laughs> Some guy conked me when I jumped him. He was trying to drop a barrel on an old man. That was my father. We found you on the catwalk up above and brought you down here. Where is it, Father? Here, Mr. Mitchell, saying a prayer for you. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, things were so busy, I didn't have a chance to get acquainted. Welcome to our home, Mr. Mitchell. Thanks. I want to thank you for saving the life of my father. But who would want to kill me? You are our symbol. Without you, Father, our dissension would even be greater. Would you recognize the man who did this? No, I didn't get a look at him. His partner slugged me from behind. Yosef! Yosef! Yosef, come! All of you! Come, all of you! Come see for yourself! The ship to take us to our new homeland. It's really here. You didn't think it would come? No, even up until now, I didn't think it would come. Joseph, with your permission, I will ask for a volunteer work party to start loading our supplies aboard. Right away. The sooner we get aboard, the better. Maybe a good idea. All right. You better keep your eye on your dad until we're all safely aboard. Gorek, you mentioned that you didn't trust Miklos. I do not. I'd like to talk to him. You'll find him in the office. Miklos? Yes, Mr. Mitchell. I didn't know you knew my name. Oh, a person who works in this office knows all the affairs of the camp. Yeah, I guess so. Yes. Anything I can do for you? He was here first. Oh, I'm just visiting, waiting for a friend. How long have you been working here? Ever since the camp started. No, no, I mean tonight. Oh, all evening. You sure? Well, why, of course. You sure you weren't up on the catwalk this afternoon? How could I be there when I, I was here? That's a good question. When I find an answer, I'll be back. Well, hello. Hello. What's your name, honey? Me, what's yours? I'm Steve Mitchell. How are you? I'm fine. I'm glad to hear that. This is Tisha, Mr. Mitchell. Isn't she pretty? I think she's just about the prettiest I've ever seen, Nina. Thank you. Are you going to live with us? Yeah, for a little while. I like that. You know, I think I'm going to like it, too. Are you going to come to our new home with us? Yeah, yeah. Do you know where it is? Well, approximately. Tell us about it, please. Well, haven't you heard all about it? Oh, yes, so many times. But it's been so long, and it's always so wonderful. Well, it's a little island, and it's all surrounded by the blue sea. We can go swimming? Oh, sure. You can have picnics on the beach and go walking in the woods. Will there be birds singing? Sure, sure. And squirrels chirping and oh, all kinds of nice things. Well, we have school again, real school. Oh, sure, with playgrounds. And will we have Sunday school once again, real, really and truly? Really and truly. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, we'll be so happy. I'm sure we will. Goodbye, Mr. Bye, Nina. Mr. Mitchell. Oh, John. I guess I fell asleep. Well? 
Well, you telephoned for me. Telephone? I... Only a few minutes ago, my father answered the telephone and said it was you, that you wanted to see me. But I didn't telephone you. And who? Someone fixed it so your father would be alone. No sign of a struggle. And no sign of father. Hey, his pipe. Still warm. Can't have been gone long. We must spread the word. Oh. Thank heaven you are safe. Safe? That phone call was a fake to get John away from you. Why, then the second one must have been false, too. The second one? Right after you left, there was another call. I was wanted immediately in back of the building here. As I was on my way, I saw Frederick here and stopped to see how he was getting on. I'm glad you did. Where did it come from? Somewhere from above. There he goes! Oh, we could never catch him in the shadows. There are so many places one could hide in this warehouse. Those phone calls, they must have come from the office. Miklos! Yeah, come on. Where's Miklos? The man who works here? He just left a minute ago. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm just visiting. Strange. I don't remember ever seeing this man before. There's Miklos. With... Mikl Shari with Miklos. Come on. John! Sure. Hey, what is this perfume? Soap, candy Black bars. Black market. There is always a demand. If it were not I, someone else would do it. That's what you've been whispering to people about, drumming up business, huh? Shari, you dealt with this man. No, John. I only... Well, he told me he had some things he wanted to show me. I didn't know what he meant, and... When I found out... Well, if that's what you think of me, John... Well, Shari, wait. Oh, now she is angry with me again. Oh, she'll probably simmer down. It still doesn't explain the trap you set for Joseph with those phone calls. Trap? Uh, I set no trap. Those phone calls had to come from the office. Oh, oh the visitor. He, he was the one that wanted to use the phone. The man we talked to back there. He set the trap and shot at your father. Oh. Come on. Hey. 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 It could only have happened a few minutes ago. Yeah, that means the guy we're after is still one jump ahead of us. This guy was just a stooge. He had served his purpose and a knife in the back to shut his mouth. Yeah, which means the boy we want is still on the loose. But the attempt on father's life has failed. And maybe in the morning, when we are all aboard ship, maybe then we will be safe. Yeah, maybe. By morning, it's completed and we all go aboard. I should be breathing a sigh of relief along about now, but I'm not. I can't seem to get rid of that uneasy feeling, almost like waiting for something to happen. But as we steam uneventfully through the Mediterranean heading east, I begin to relax a little. Maybe our trouble is over. Along toward evening, the weather starts kicking up, and by 10 o'clock, the ship is finding the going pretty rough. This is not good for the stomach, Mitchell. That old uncertain feeling, huh, Gorek? A little. But even so, tonight I'm a happy man. The loading completed satisfactorily, the construction equipment all turned back to the Moroccan government, now to start planning our new island home. Yes, in spite of my stomach, I'm a happy man. Well, I can use a little sleep. See you later. Right on, Mitchell. Night. Good night. Steve. Oh, John. What's the matter? Steve, I just received an urgent radio message from the government in Morocco. They say a large quantity of explosives is missing from the supplies we returned to them. 
Who had charge of loading the ship back there? Gorick himself. Gorick. It's been him all along. He was in the perfect spot for it. But, but why steal explosives? Why do you think he was so anxious to get everybody aboard the ship? He, he intends to blow up the ship with everybody on it. Yeah. Oh. Where's Gorick? He left the bridge right after you did, Mitchell. Steve, would he blow up the ship with himself on it? I saw him look at the charts. I looked at him earlier myself. Shortly before midnight, we passed a small island. That's right. He could drop a life raft over the side near the island. After he'd set the time bomb. Steve, that bomb is ticking away. We must spread the word. We no, must... No, no, no. We'd start a stampede. You're quite right, Mitchell. We can't put the passengers overboard in a lifeboat, not in a sea like this. All of which means we've got to find Gorick of the time bomb fast. Oh, but where do we begin to look? It would affect the uh, maximum damage would probably be below the waterline and just about amidships. All right, you take one side of the ship and I'll take the other. Right. I'll get my tools and a gun. A gun? I'm a man of peace, but Gorick cannot do this to my people. And if we find a time bomb, I will know what to do. I was on demolition duty during the war. Good. I was going to die of overboard after I armed it. No, it doesn't matter. Where's the bomb? <laughs> You'll find out at midnight. Three minutes to two. It must be in here someplace. Stand still and listen. Ticking. The bomb? Where? It's louder over here. Here. Here's the bomb. I think we can disarm it by loosening the knot gently and sliding the timing mechanism out. left. Cylinder out. That's the trigger. Ten seconds left. It won't budge. It must be riding the lip. One half turn either way. Coming! 
That's all. That's all. Last night, I did not think we would live to see it. Mr. Mitchell, you cannot know how much this means to us. I think I do. returning cast member from the previous episode, The Submarine Story. Paul Dubov, who played the first mate in The Submarine Story, plays John Sieta in this one. Although in this episode, he wears a mustache. Dubov was like many experienced character actors of the era, who often appeared in the same programs over and over again though in different roles. And there were several others. You could cite to Stacey Harris or Herb Vigran in that same class. It was easier to get away with back then, but I think even then there was an awareness that you really had to put in some effort to make this work. You didn't want it to be too obvious, so you would mix things up. And in this episode, of course, he's uh, not only wearing a mustache, but he's affecting a different accent. And there are other things characters can do, you know, glasses, or even just the type of uh, character that they're playing. So even though this thing did happen quite a bit uh, in the early days of television, I think there was some thought put into it. This is definitely a slower-paced episode of Dangerous Assignment. And it does show a little bit of the softer side of Steve Mitchell. He's clearly touched by the plot of these refugees. And it's an important historical uh, reminder. After the Second World War, uh, when you had the growing Soviet control over Eastern Europe, you had a major humanitarian crisis with 15 million refugees displaced from Eastern Europe in the course of five years after World War II. And this was yet another humanitarian crisis in a long series of them. It's a bit atypical for dangerous assignment particularly going back to the radio version, as the series tends to focus on big spy adventures and focus little on the sort of human cost and politics of the time. But for a series like Dangerous Assignment, you do need to address that, uh, and it's a reminder that uh, the series ultimately came about after two of the most turbulent decades in human history, going back to the Great Depression. I don't know quite how I feel about the big climax of the episode. Certainly there have been diffusing a bomb endings. Those seem to be more exciting with a digital clock, which obviously was probably not available in 1951. Although uh, having someone count it down is probably better than having an analog clock like on the wall or something like that. I think that'd be very hard to make believable on a ship and also very hard to shoot. I will say that the Dragnet premiere dealt with a bomb and uh, did so much better in its uh, premiere episode, which will probably end up featuring in a year or so. But that will do it for today. 
Join us back here next time for another episode of Public Domain Video Theater. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Det-